welcome to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather and I've got a little project going on in the kitchen today. So my husband is from a really large family. He's one of six kids and all of those six kids have quite a few kids of their own. So at Christmas time, it can be a little bit intimidating. I'm just one of two to try to think about what the heck am I going to get all of these people. So traditionally, we like to give family gifts and I like to make those family gifts from things that we produce here on our farm. It's really special to me to get to share our farm in that way. So what I'm gonna be making today and bringing you along with me is a salve. So we have honeybees here and we have our own beeswax that we can put into this salve to firm it up. If you don't have your own bees and you haven't rendered your own wax, you can usually find a beeswax granules or pellets at health food stores. This salve here is actually one that I made earlier in the year with our homemade calendula flowers, homemade chamomile, and our beeswax with a little bit of olive oil. And you can see a little bit of the flower petals there that made it through, and I think that adds a lot of character. So this is a good example of what I'm trying to replicate today, except for instead of chamomile and calendula, I have plantain. So much, much earlier in the year, actually sometime in May, I picked some wild plantain out of our front yard and I stuck it to steep in some olive oil. Really, I only needed to have let this sit for around five to six weeks to infuse the plantain constituents into the oil. It has been sitting for way longer than that and that's not expressly necessary. Actually, there's ways that you can simmer or lightly heat up the oil with the herb on the stove and get an infused oil in the matter of four to six hours. So if you don't have weeks to wait in order to give this gift or make this salve, you don't have to have that much time. So I'm gonna link a recipe in the description box below that explains how you can infuse oil with your herbs or flowers in a matter of hours. I'm not gonna be doing that today, but it is an option. So the plantain salve that I'm making today is really good for bug bites, scrapes, bruises, dry hands. I think it's gonna be a really versatile salve. Because I want the salve to be able to be used all over the body, including the lips and other sensitive areas, I don't wanna put any fragrance oils or even any essential oils in there. I don't know what kind of sensitivities everybody in the family have, so just to be safe, I'm gonna leave that out, but it's gonna be lovely anyway. So along with the oil, the infused oil that I have, I have some home rendered beeswax from our bees. I've gotta weigh this to figure out exactly how much beeswax it is. In general, the wax wax to oil ratio should be one part wax to every four to seven parts oil, depending on how thick or silky you want your salve to be. In the salve that I made earlier in the year, I believe it was one part wax to five parts oil that I did. So I'm just gonna repeat that today. So in order to figure out the ratio, I need to strain the plantain out of this oil and figure out exactly how much oil I have so I can determine how much beeswax I'm going to need. So I've got my well-infused plantain here. Just put it through a strainer. looks like I have right around nine ounces of oil. And this is really important to point out because we all kind of learn in school that eight ounces of water is one cup. This is right at two cups of oil and it's only nine ounces because oil is less dense than water and that's why oil floats on water. So try not to go by cups and milliliters and all that, try to always go by weight. I think I'm gonna go for right around not quite two ounces of beeswax. That's a little bit more than two ounces. There, we'll just go right at two ounces of beeswax for today. It's a nice round number. So we've got our oil here and I'm gonna be placing it in a double boiler type situation. So this pot does have a little bit of water in it and that's gonna allow the oil to heat up really nicely and really evenly. And really our whole goal today is just to melt the beeswax into the oil and this is the best way to do that. The beeswax is gonna melt easier if I break this up into smaller pieces. So I'm gonna grab my knife and get to chopping. 
It's important to note too that beeswax is going to leave a residue on basically everything. The easiest way that I have found to get beeswax off of almost anything is to take a hot kettle of water and pour it over whatever you're trying to get the beeswax off as long as whatever it is is heat safe. So these are very nice knives. It's going to be covered in beeswax but I will be able to get it off with boiling water. <laughs> And if you had the beeswax pellets or the beeswax beads, you would not have to worry about this step. Those are designed for melting. They're already at a really great size. So I actually started out the pot on medium high because I don't have any patience, but I don't exactly want this to come to a roaring boil. Like I mentioned before, oil and water don't mix and I don't really want any of the water to splash up into my oil mixture here, my oil and beeswax, because when we do jar this up, any water that's left behind um, could kind of settle on the bottom and contribute to mold in the sap, which is not what we want. So you don't want to have, if you've just wash your jars. Any kind of moisture left in here, you want these to be completely dry. So all I am doing, I have turned this down to medium low now at this point. All I'm doing is whisking every so often and getting these little granules of beeswax moving around, just helping them melt a little bit faster and a little bit easier. Okay, now that the beeswax is all melted into the oil, the salve is actually ready to pour and cool. So very, very carefully take that oil out of the water bath and pour it into the jars. You can use glass jars or metal. Just make sure that whatever you use, it is heat safe. This oil isn't extremely hot, but I wouldn't be using any kind of plastics that weren't heat safe. So right there at the end, right after the beeswax melts and right before pouring, if you wanted to add a fragrance or even like a mica powder for a little bit of sparkle, that would be the best time to do so. And as I was whisking up the oil, I was thinking too, if you wanted to add a little bit of beetroot powder to make like a tinted lip salve or a cream blush, that could be a really cool idea for this too. So here is the calendula and uh, chamomile one and here is the plantain one. You can tell the color difference there. I think that is super cool. So here's a glimpse as to what our families are getting this Christmas. And if you wondered, yes, they already know what they're getting this Christmas because right after we started getting lots of honey out of our bees, they were trying to buy it right away. And I had to tell them, no, if you buy it now, then I won't have anything to give you for Christmas. So this is their Christmas gift. They already know about it. Hopefully this post was inspiring for you. And if it was, we hope you hit the subscribe button and stick around. Bye.